The Piston Honda Mark III is a dual wavetable VCO with 512 waveforms, independent wave shaper per channel, morphing preset manager, and a wealth of other deep and unique features that we will explore in this video. To start, let's take a look at the panel controls. 512 waveforms are arranged in an 8x8x8 cube across the three sliders. The X, Y, and Z axes are used to select a single point or wave within that cube. With the default morphing behavior, timbres in between the individual waveforms may be selected. Although the factory wave set consists of a diverse collection of timbres, the Piston Honda Mark III includes a micro SD card slot for loading your own custom wavetables. The sliders are enabled per channel via the select buttons. Oscillator A, B, or both may be selected, but the controls are always connected to one oscillator. The internal OLED screen conveniently displays the selected wavetable, along with other useful information. Currently they match because they are both selected. If we deselect A, we can hear it stays the same. Now we are free to morph B into a new, independent shape. As soon as we reselect oscillator A, we can see its information return to the screen. Now as the sliders change, the two different oscillators retain their relative wave offsets until they begin to overlap and return to a state of matched wave tables. Morphing can be switched on or off per axis via each oscillator's menu. To access this menu, hold the encoder and press the mode switch for the desired oscillator. Turn the encoder and select Morph Enable. Here we can choose any combination of X, Y, or Z to include morphing, or disable it entirely. When morphing is off, the changing of an axis will simply step between waves for a more mechanical sound. Feel free to set the morphing parameters on each oscillator to be completely different. The large orange knobs adjust course tune by default. Notice the note indication and tuning bar references on the display. The bar will aid in adjustment of the fine tune parameter. If both oscillators are selected, the bar disappears and the note values of both oscillators are shown. By default, the tune knobs are arranged as coarse and fine tune. If you wish to switch them for live performance, you can enter the global options menu by holding the encoder and pressing the link button. Select frequency knob and change the operation to reverse. Now we have coarse frequency on the small knob and fine tune on the large knob. Finally, we can offset each oscillator by octaves in the oscillator options menu. To do this, hold the encoder and press the mode button. Select octave and adjust up to or down two octaves. The CV input can be used for secondary pitch adjustment. Uses include transposition, vibrato, or other effects achieved with envelopes or LFOs. Here we are creating a simple vibrato with the Piston Honda Mark II in LFO mode. The built-in attenuverter lets us dial in varying amounts in both the negative and positive domain.
Here we are sending a sequence from the Stilson hammer into the volt per octave of oscillator A. As expected, when the VCA for oscillator B is opened, we will hear a steady tone. At the moment, the waveforms are the only linked portion of the two oscillators. The link button will reroute pitch control of oscillator B to the oscillator A coarse tune and volt per octave input. Now that the link button is pressed, notice the unison effect between the two oscillators. This is due to the oscillator B fine tune control remaining active. Adjust this to change the amount of detune and chorusing effect between the two oscillators. One interesting way the link feature can be used is to accent the rhythms of oscillator A by opening a VCA after oscillator B at select times. It is further enhanced by choosing a different wavetable on oscillator B. The piston Honda is capable of classic oscillator sync sounds. Patch another VCO's audio out to the sync input. As the course tune is changed, metallic timbres will emerge. Patching an LFO to the CV input will allow for automatic timbre adjustment. Using two wavetable oscillators takes the traditional idea of sync and takes it much further. Notice the unique timbres as the sliders are changed on both oscillators. Interesting effects can be achieved if the sequenced oscillator is synced to an LFO or steady pitched oscillator. Another easy to overlook feature of the piston Honda is its two FM inputs, one per oscillator. Each oscillator's FM input is normal to the other's audio output. In practice, this offers a fast way to enter the territory of rich timbres or noise by simply turning up the FM attenuators. Depending on the settings of each oscillator, the results can vary wildly. Frequency modulating oscillator A with a steady oscillator B frequency is typically less pleasant than sending it a duplicate sequence. Now we have a matching ratio between the two oscillators. So far we have only been using two sine waves. Combining two complex waveforms can lead to some unapologetically harsh and metallic timbres. For something in between the two, let's set one oscillator to a sine wave and frequency modulate that with a complex wave table from the other oscillator.
max this out, we can bring up FM on oscillator B as well, creating a loop of cross-modulation. we can patch external oscillators to the FM inputs as well. This will break the normaling of the built-in oscillators. All of the same techniques apply, but timbre and behavior will vary depending on what oscillators or audio sources are used. Regardless, the FM inputs are a great pathway to creating very interesting sounds with the piston Honda. The final three jacks are perhaps the most exciting of the control inputs. These are associated with the wavetable sliders and navigate the cube of 512 waveforms with three CV values. Here we will patch an LFO from the Piston Honda Mark II to control the Z axis. Diving in the attenuator allows for fine adjustment of the range of modulation. Now we have patched an envelope to the more subtle x-axis. Notice how a more natural filtering type effect can be achieved when controlling the morphing of a sine wave to a more complex wave with our envelope. As stated before, the attenuverters help to dial in very specific waveform changes. Sending smooth, unrelated control voltages to the X, Y, and Z inputs creates chaotic yet flowing motion and timbre as we travel through the cube. Returning to the oscillator options menu, the morphing can be shut off for a more rhythmic sounding stepping between wavetables. This sounds particularly interesting with external control. One final technique is to patch gates to the axis CV inputs from modules like the Zorlon Cannon or Stilson Hammer. Combined with the attenuverters and slider positions, gate signals will essentially select between two waveforms of your choice per axis. Because all three sliders are entangled, different CVs on each axis can provide more unique waveform selection than just patching the same types of signals to all three. Here we have rhythmic gates patched to X and Y, and a sine wave LFO patched to Z. The interface of the Piston Honda was designed to be quick and intuitive to use while maximizing the depth of control over sound shaping.
this first section of the Piston Honda Mark III series, we have covered most of the front panel controls and jacks. In future videos, we will look at external wave shaping, deeper menu features, the preset manager, and designing custom wave tables. Thanks for tuning in. 